have um, approximately 3,000 containers full of uh, emergency um, supplies, relief cargo. There's all kinds of goods, commercial materials, um, construction materials as well, medicines and everything and all kind of goods on um, food. There's a lot of food in these containers. There's also reefers that are filled of, of, of food as well. Frozen poultry as an example, pork and others. Um, and so far, our terminal is completely up to its capacity, maximum capacity, and we have been able to dispatch um, barely 4% of um, our usual flow at our exit gates. The problem has been with the, with the logistics, the part of the supply chain that moves the cargo from our terminal to the shelves or to the tables of the people of Puerto Rico. Now, for those employees who have been able to get to their workplace and for those trucking companies, as an example, they have their equipment available and ready, then they're facing the challenge of, of the fact that there's no fuel. So if you have the equipment, you have the drivers, but you don't have the fuel, then you uh, definitely cannot afford to move the cargo. If this continues on, if we're not able to start dispatching cargo, there's not gonna be sufficient space to unload our next barges that are in line to, to come to the port. And this is stuff that's coming from FEMA and from private companies, from the government? Where is it all coming from? It's all around. Uh, um, there's emergency supplies. There's relief cargo from FEMA. There's um, food for, for DCs here in Puerto Rico, um, all supermarkets. I mean, you name it. That is very sad and frustrating for whatever reasons that that we have plenty of inventory of our, in our ports. There's enough to supply the needs. It's just a matter, again, how do we move them to the final destination?